and welcome back to Bitmovin's Video Tech Trends Mini Clips. Today, we're going to be talking about another one of our top five trends, uh, which you may have known as the new norm of streaming models, the fact that there is no norm. Now, our, our video tech trends are stemming from our video developer report of 2020, where we surveyed over 800 different respondents and from conversations with our partners, with our experts to develop what we believe will be the trends for the next 12 months. And that's, of course, why we're bringing in great experts like Nacho Mileo from LSD Live, uh, who's joining us today to discuss our, our fourth trend. One of the things that you've brought up quite a bit in the past questions is this kind of small uh, approach where you don't pay for everything all at once. And some of the some of our older viewers may know that may know of this model from before, but some of our newer newer viewers may not. Can you? Ex we know this as TVOD. Can you tell me a little bit more about TVOD and also perhaps a little bit about bundling and how these additional factors play into the competition against SVOD and AVOD? Well, TVOD or, or yes, transactional VOD is it's a really old model. Uh, it was what we used to call pay-per-view, basically just paying for certain content uh, in the case of on-demand for a, a certain amount of time, let's say 24 hours, 48 hours, just like uh, Blockbuster when we were kids. And for live, you get access to certain event, game, match, whatever. Um, the danger thing about TVOD, especially for live, is that uh, if you have some uh, source problem or some uh, amount of users uh, get issues, you need to be really fast to, to fix it. For on-demand, it's pretty straightforward. Uh, Apple has had this for, for ages in, in, their, in their iTunes service. Um, on the other hand, the ABOT, the, the transactional VOD or TBOT, uh, lets you, uh, you know, uh, get lots of information about the, the event that you are going to broadcast, for instance, and and it gives you the ability to, you know, uh, it's it's a gold uh, information for your IT team. You know, you, you know, if you sell this game a thousand times, you know that probably you will have a thousand users. So it's uh, it's a really good information in terms of escalation and stuff. Um, on the other hand, bundling is like you know, pack a pack of of things or a partial subscription. You know, you get access to certain part of of a catalog or certain amount of of uh, content if it's live, it's events. Um, the biggest uh, you know provider of of bundling uh, I, I've seen is the NBA uh, with their League Pass service. They let you, for instance, get the you know. Denver Nuggets uh, uh, games or just uh, a certain amount of, of games. Uh, I guess, uh, as, as I said in the beginning, this gives you the possibility of reaching more out. Uh, sometimes we, we've seen this with, with sports OTT all over the world, that you get a huge offer, but you don't care really about all the offer of that OTT and, and you want to buy some part of it. And and it's it's crucial these days when, when you have like, 10 services at the same time, and you want to get rid of them, but you maybe want to watch one game, and that's that's when uh, when you need to to stop being flexible to keep the you know biggest amount of use possible. To tie this all together, we're speaking to a brand new content provider, or a new OTT service. Do you have any quick points or tips? that you would advise for new content providers when they're creating their, their OTT service? Uh, okay, I, I need a lot of time to, to go deeper in, in each of what I think are the main things nowadays, but I will try to, to keep it simple and, and quick. Uh, first of all, constant, it's still the king. You, you, we may be discussing, but it's still the king. Uh, second, uh, I would say uh, embrace churn. Uh, you know, having Game of Thrones won't prevent users from jumping down from HBO once they finish it. So um, 
you know, considering that you will have always a, a hardcore, uh, you know, a core of users, uh, you know, give the give them the the possibility to to uh, buy different things or different bundles or or certain parts certain parts of the content. Um, be flexible and dynamic, uh, and use the data. You know, you cannot improve what's not being measured. So measure as much as you can, and and take you know, take decisions or change things on your service according to the data that you're seeing and know what you think is going to work or not going to work. Um, finally, as I always say, it looks like people like watching TV on their TVs. So don't go fancy before you got everything or before you got the basics working. You know, no one will care about picture in picture if your start of time is over six seconds or if your Chromecast is not working. So. I guess that's like the three or four points that, that I would like to, to mention very, very quick. Well, thank you, Nacho. That was very insightful. I'm really excited for the takeaways to see what our audience brings out from this, the great services that can develop uh, and other takeaways that we can bring from this. Uh, I really appreciate you coming on and joining us for our Video Tech Trends mini clips. We'll have a bunch of other content and resources in this post, stuff from LSD Live, stuff from Bitmovin, our full webinar, blogs, bunch of stuff to help you understand what are the video tech trends of 2021 and how we can further develop. Thanks again, Nacho, is an absolute pleasure. Thank you very much. Uh, and again, thanks for having me, thanks for the time. I hope everyone finds this insightful. Thanks. Have a nice day. Take care. You too. Bye. Bye.